The young girl you're about to meet is far from home, far from family, and surrounded by nothing but water. Talk about daunting. She's completely alone, sailing around the world and quite possibly risking her life, all in the effort to break a record. It makes you wonder, what are the parents thinking when they let their kids go off on these harrowing adventures? Chris Connolly answers the question. Parents who plead that their plugged-in kids get off the couch, be careful what you wish for. Meet these four adventurous teens, eager for the open sea, each of them determined to sail around the world alone. After she and her father faced off with their government for the right to set sail, at the helm of a 39-foot catch now off the coast of Africa is giddy 16-year-old Laura Decker trying to become the youngest ever to sail the globe by herself. And as she told Australian TV, all good with her who needs the comfort of home, life at sea. I don't really miss it because I'm totally used to it. For me, it's really normal. Abby Sunderland from Thousand Oaks, California would understand that feeling. She faced the same rewards and risks. I'm definitely nervous, but I understand the ocean and I understand how dangerous what I'm doing actually is and I understand how careful I need to be out there. Down below is here where I'll spend most of my time. I can control pretty much the whole boat from right here. I've got my chart plotter, my autopilot. It was back in 2009 when Abby began talking publicly about her plan to circumnavigate the globe by herself in this 40-foot boat, Wild Eyes the fulfillment of a dream she sprang on her parents when she was just 13. So when your daughter comes to you and says, I want to sail around the world by myself, what's your first reaction? See you later. <laughs> when any of my kids come to me and, uh, with, a, with an ambition, I, I don't laugh at it. I like to listen to my kids. From her earliest days, even in diapers, Abby was trained in seamanship by her father, testing her, he says, with tougher and tougher solo scenarios through her teens. There was a particularly uh, rough day and, and the, her boat was rocking from gunnel to gunnel. We'd been at it for you know 20 hours at that stage and um, I said, so Abby, are you ready to sail around the world now? To which she replied, where is my boat? She ended up getting a sponsor and all she needed was approval, you know, from us. Why not just say no? No, you can't. That, that would have been the easiest thing for us to have said would have been no. But then, what about Abigail and all her talents? Yeah, but what about this? Man, we just hit a wild. This is 17-year-old Aussie Jesse Martin. In 1999, he set off to sail around the world by himself, yet he struggled with loneliness. I reckon I could think of 30 other places that I'd rather be at the moment. Jesse also encountered life-threatening storms while alone at sea that left him emotionally devastated. Jesse witnessed some unforgettable sights along the way and made it safely. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Maybe stop a few times, but... Meanwhile, the Sunderlands wouldn't even let Abby walk the family dog at night without someone accompanying her. But they decided to let her sail around the world all by herself at 16. Could there be a tragedy? Yeah, there could be. But there could be a tragedy on the way home tonight, you know, or, or driving with her friends in a car at 16. So you arm them with the, the coping skills and then you pray. It's so foreign to what I would think is what you would want for your child. And that is to make sure of their safety. Number one, paramount above anything else in the world. T.J. Simers, sports columnist for the Los Angeles Times, was horrified by the news of Abby's trip. This kid's going to be out there all by herself. Death is a possibility. Bad weather. But apparently, she's a really talented sailor. She's a kid. In January 2010, with 300 pounds of freeze-dried food on board, Abby sets sail for Marina del Rey. Looking good, Abby. 
with parents watching as their teenage daughter faded into the horizon. Don't be late for dinner in about six months time, okay? Love you, love you, bye. While at sea, Abby talked with her mother twice a day, blogged and kept up her page on Facebook, where one of her friends was this teen, Aussie Jessica Watson, a slightly older 16-year-old, also in the process of sailing solo around the world, non-stop. I'm sitting here looking out at a Cape Horn out the window. Hey, just cooking dinner at the moment, and uh, tonight we're having a tin pie. After 210 days at sea, Jessica pulled into Sydney Harbour to a huge welcome. Newest Australian hero. I'm actually going to disagree with what our Prime Minister has just said. I don't consider... <laughs> I don't consider myself a hero. I'm an ordinary girl who believed in her dream. Abby's dream was to take Jessica's new world record for herself. Her route crafted to avoid any threat of pirates, took her past Chile, then around Cape Horn, and into the South Atlantic. When we talked to her via Skype, she'd been at sea for 101 days. I think it actually might be more fun if there was somebody else on board, but I'm happy to do it long term, so. Do you ever get scared? Yeah, I've been scared a few times. I got hit by a rogue wave. I did get knocked down. I'd be happy if it didn't happen again. But just a week after our chat, in the early morning hours of June 10, 2010, there was heart-stopping news from Abby's family. As a fierce storm surrounded her boat deep in the Indian Ocean, all communication with Abby had been lost, and her ship's emergency beacons had switched on. We have no idea what happened. She's uh, just off the, the beacons. It could have been equipment malfunction, and uh, she just needs some help out there. There are signs of serious trouble tonight for a California teenager. The search for Abby's boat galvanized the world. Abby Sunderland. Fears intensified for Abby's safety. Then, 20 agonizing hours later, there was news at last. Her boat had been spotted from a plane, its mast gone, but still afloat. And Abby was alive. We're all very relieved. Um, it's been a, a long couple of days, and uh, we'll, we'll be glad to get her back here. Abby would later recount this scene recreated for a documentary a 60 foot wave crashing over her boat, snapping off the boat's mast, capsizing the ship. I don't know if anybody can get out where I am right now. In the emotional aftermath, after Abby was finally rescued by a French fishing trawler, her parents were relieved but defiant about charges that they'd been irresponsible in facilitating Abby's voyage. I think what they're trying to do is stir up media. I think they're trying to get their face on camera. And that's not what this is about. What this is about is a young lady who has a, a great skill on the ocean. Back home, Abby has been sharing her story, writing a book about her trip, Dutch teen Laura Decker sails on tonight across the fascinating, unforgiving sea.